math point 11 graphs and intercepts if you're learning this in school about graphs and intercepts and about transformations then those are going to take a few weeks perhaps a few months for you to understand uh, how to transform graphs but since we're doing this for the SAT we can do this pretty quickly and and so we won't go into the details on the notes that we originally want you to go over and again we're going to try to see if the using the decimals calculator is the fastest way to do this and if so then there's no reason to go back and spend hours and weeks in relearning how to graph things using a um, using the math way you learn in school there are two ways that the graphs can be transformed uh, one is by uh, translation and this is a shift or like moving uh, shift or move and the other way is by stretching or compressing so it could be going from for example from this what you see here to this to this to this so this would be compressing making it thinner and thinner or it could be the opposite it could be this it could be wider that would be stretching and compressing while translation is looking like this and as I do that it's moving lower and lower and that's translation in a equation, a, uh, equation, you can have this formula. Uh, the, the a is the uh, like the, the magnitude. Um, there's a function here, and then the function inside there could be a coefficient next to the x, or like another number here, or there's a uh, one, two, three, four, a fourth number on the outside of of this whole thing. But without going into so much detail we can just uh, graph it on the calculator and take a look at it. You're supposed to learn in your math class that if you have a function and you have a minus in the front, then this would flip the graph over the x-axis. What that means is if I have, let's say, this um, quadratic equation here and I want to change that by change by adding a minus in the front what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this over the x-axis and if I have a minus inside on the x going from this to negative x then I'm flipping this over the the y-axis here so if you look at this this is like the mirror image of this flipping over here so this is like the the, the pivot uh, line here. This would be flipping over the y-axis, but if that doesn't make sense, then graphically it makes sense. So just graphing the calculator and you'll be able to see that. Here we're also not going to go into detail on how to transform a graph from this into this. Just graph it and looking at the graph you'll know how, how the graph looks like. Here's an example you have an equation f of x and that is x squared so we're going to graph x squared that's f of x there's g of x and g of x is x squared plus 3 two graphs here which of the following translations moving of the graph results in graph of g so you're starting with f starting with the red one you're moving moving changing the graph into the black line, how do you do it? By just looking at it, you're uh, moving three units. Is it downwards, upwards, left or right? And you're moving from here to here going upwards, right? So the answer is going upwards, the answer is B. See how easy and perhaps stupid this math these math questions are on the SAT? Um, you have a line that looks like this. The question uh, here says, if each data point is shifted three units upwards. So this one you can't use the calculator but hopefully it's straightforward enough to solve it by by just looking at it it says if each data point so you have this line and this line is the best fit line meaning that if you want to approximate all the points here then this line is the best, appro best approximation for all the points and if each data point is shifted three units upward so that means this point becomes this point this point here becomes this point and so on how will the new line 
how will the value of the y-intercept of the new line, so how will like, this point here compare with the line shown, compare with this line. And maybe by looking at it, you'll see that this the value of this, of the y-value for this point goes up by approximately three units. In fact, it should be three exactly, because if you're moving all the points up by exactly three, then the best line would go up exactly also by three. So it would increase exactly by three. Okay, we'll do just one more question, um, but perhaps you can also figure these questions out. And by this point, realize that these questions are are extremely easy. The graph is shown, which is the following: is this graph plus two, and uh, plus two. If you don't know what the effect of plus two is, so even though here you might need to um, figure out what this graph first before you can graph it exactly maybe we don't need to graph it exactly because by looking at the choices you see that they the point of this question is you have this line now you have this line plus two the new line and how is the new line compared to the old line looking at the choices this one looks like it's shifted downwards this one looks like it's also shifted downwards right the original the origin is here and this one is above the origin while this one is on the origin so this one is shifted down a lot. This one is shifted down by a little. This line looks more uh, horizontal, it looks more steep. And this line looks like it's uh, shifted up from here. The y-intercept being two to the y-intercept being one, two, three, four, being four. Um, if you don't know how to graph this exact line, which um, I won't graph it just to show you the point. If you don't know, don't know how to graph this, Perhaps you remember from your math class that y equals x looks like this, and this line looks not exactly like this, but it looks more or less like this. And again, you're just looking for the relationship. So even if this point is not exactly on here, that's fine. You have this, and the new line is y equals x, the original line, plus 2. So this new line here it's a plus two and you can see that by doing a plus two you're shifting the graph upwards by two units while keeping the the steepness of the line so that means in the choices a and b are wrong because they moved down c is r uh, wrong because even though it moved up it became more steep and the answer is d because it moved up and moving up only without changing the steepness and now let's continue to talk about intercepts. And in the digital SAT, you can see the question asking you for finding the x-intercept or the y-intercept. And there is that math way that you remember from your math class, if you remember how to do it. But if you don't, then take a guess what the first method I want you guys to work on is using the calculator. Now, here's an example. The scatter plot above shows the circuit production, which of the following could be the slope of the line of best fit for these data. Now, it may require you to know a little bit about slope and how the, the graph look like, but before we talked about a line, the equation for a line is y equals mx plus b. So with that in mind, you know that the b is the the y-intercept. So the graph that we're going to be graphing will look like mx, you don't know what the m is, plus b. And b is, here it looks like approximately 17.5 or 18. It doesn't matter. Whatever you put down, it's going to work because the choices are going to be very different from one to another. So uh, whether it's 17 or 18, it's not gonna make a difference. Now you don't know what the best uh, best slope is, but you could, and here we don't need to add a slider because you're given the choices. So remember before in math point two, there's a strategy that we cover, which is plug and check. So you know that the slope is either 2.12 or 5.25 or the other ones. So let's give all of them a shot. Start with choice A, y equals 2.12x, that's the slope, plus b. 
And we can't see it because we're zoomed uh, in too much. But if we zoom out a little and try to find this line, okay, so we see this line and it's pretty vertical. But that's because the coordinates here are not set up the way that we have here. So if you only zoom out and look at this without looking at the, the coordinates, you may think that this is wrong because this is too vertical. But we're going to change this into this. So the range for the y value is going from 0 to 40, while the x value is from 0 to, uh, to 8 to 9. And we don't need the minor grid line to make it simple. Okay, so we have this, and this is an example of this, but this is compressed a lot. Notice the dimension of this is like more vertical and this is more horizontal. So we should move this one more in the same dimension. And so you will see that this looks very much like this. I can hide this also. It looks very much like this. And we're going to give the other ones a shot. So I'll have five. 0.25 here. I'll have 7.8 here. Maybe by this point you will see that if it's not the red line, then the other ones are way too steep compared to this, what we have here. So the answer then must be A because it's not as steep as the other ones. Let's move on. Number two. In the xy plane, the graph intersects the x-axis at this, what is the value of c? There's a math way that you can do it, and if you remember that, feel free to do that. But here, we're going to use a calculator and graph this and take a look. And go back home, I'm going to see this, and c comma zero means something comma zero, something comma zero, so it's the x-axis, so it's this point here. and right there 6.6667 so that's the value for c and typing that into the field for entering your grid in would be the right answer uh, if you know how to convert that to a fraction that's cool if not then just type in this decimal number 6.667 okay i will skip these practice questions do them in class by yourself, then with a the teacher, and go over those. Uh, any questions, then ask your teacher. And these are two more sets of practice questions. This should say classwork, and this should say homework. Um, do those, and ask if you have any questions, and I'll see you in the next math point. Bye.